We welcome you to Midland Community Stadium. It's a rainy early October night, but it's time for Midland Dow High School football. It's the homecoming game against the Bay City Western Warriors. My name is Chris Vosters. We're staying dry under the mist here at Midland Community Stadium, and I'm joined by former Dow football coaching icon Frank Altimore. Coach, uh, let's start things off with your keys to the game tonight, please. Well, let's start with uh, Dow High. Uh, first off, I think the first thing is business as usual. Throw the ball. Keep things moving, wide open football. Don't change a thing, Nothing, no surprises. Uh, number two, I think they need to control the blitz. For Western to do anything tonight, they're gonna have to rush the quarterback and force him to throw the ball a little sooner and maybe a little more off balance. Make him move his feet a little bit, which is what really what the quarterback doesn't wanna do. And number three, they need to improve their hidden yardage, and that is on their special teams. We go to Western. We need for them to limit any turnovers. It's going to be a wet night. You give Dow a short field, they score. They must defend against the run game. They already know they've got to stop the passing game, but they know they have to stop Dow, run the football, force Dow to throw the ball in this weather. And, and number three, and this is the one thing I think teams don't do, and that is slow the game down. You're in no hurry here because the uh, Dow gets nervous when they don't have the ball. So that's, uh, those are my keys to the game. And I'm kind of uh, looking forward to this game. Homecoming's always a big occasion. Right now, the, the crowd's a little sparse, but I know they're out in the parking lot. Well, it's a big game for Dow, too, with four wins on the regular season so far and one more, and they're playoff eligible. So beyond all the distractions of a homecoming game, this is an important one for the Chargers. Well, I think they need to keep winning, and that's, you're right. Uh, this game, and then next week we have a bigger game with uh, Mount Pleasant, and then the finale with uh, Midland High. So, yeah, it's going to be a big game. It's going to be uh, lots of attention all the way through. Hard to believe just three games left in the regular season. Dow tries to punch its ticket to the playoffs formally here in Week 7 against one-win Bay City Western. The kick is brought back by Adam Doty for the Warriors, and he's cut down shy of the 30. We'll see that high-octane Dow offense here in the early going. I'm gonna be interested to see what. See, I saw Western earlier in the year, and I thought, I thought they were a good-looking football team. It, the record surprises me. What really surprises me is the fact that they are last in offense and last in defense in the, in a, a relatively weak Saginaw Valley. Dow lost its first two games of the season, as a matter of fact, but to two quality opponents, Grand Blank and Lapeer, and they've rolled through the last four games of their schedule. Sophomore Jack Frizell is the starting quarterback for Bay City Western. Pop on the carry, and he's bottled up right around the line of scrimmage. A lot of hats flying to the football. See, those are the kind of, kind of plays I, I – personally, I'd run at Dow rather than try to run around us in this kind of weather. Uh, Bay City Western is not built for wide open end sweeps and spread offenses. They're built for get in there tight and trap blocking and do all those kind of things that – teams used to do what, what Mount Pleasant does right now. On second and 11, Frizell throws incomplete. It's third down. Well, that was not your best pass. Again, you know, we talk about teams throwing the football and how, do the, how does the ball come out of the quarterback's hands? And especially in this kind of weather where you need to be able to, to really have a stable base to throw the ball. I watched Frizell just throw right now, and his elbow was down way below his shoulder. The passing game has not been one of Bay City Western's strong suits offensively. Frizell is completing just around 46% of his passes. He has to throw on third and long. There's a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and the pass is incomplete. Close play. They were targeting Aaron Norfleet, and it's fourth down. Again, Norfleet got open. He just lost his balance and couldn't catch the ball. Uh, Dow had fairly good coverage on him. But again, it's hard to make those kind of passes at this point in the game. The idea is move the football, move the chains. Don't force the game. Now, this is going to be great field position for Dow. Uh, we're going to be he's going to, uh, kick into the wind. Ben Shepard with a line drive kick. Chase Perry lets it roll. Almost to the 35, call it the 36, and now we'll see Dow's high-powered offense. And I would predict at some point there's going to be a block kick because the, the snapper 
had problems on that snap. He's a uh, uh, kicker, does that rugby style push off to the right, and teams can block that. There's going to be a block kick before this night's over. And again, given it's not pouring, but it is misting a little bit here, it could be hard to handle a long very snap. Very hard, very hard. The football, leather footballs, they get real slick when they're wet. Homecoming game for the Dow Chargers. They're 4-2 and two on the season against a 1-5 Bay City Western squad. On the ground, that's the workhorse Nick Soraki. Lowers the shoulder pads and picks up an 11-yard gain on first down for Dow. They move the chains right off the bat. Again, right off. That's exactly what they want to do. They have great field position, uh, and they just make good plays. Nick Soraki on the carry for the Chargers. Soraki, one of the marquee players in the Saginaw Valley League this year. He's a three-year starter. He's already racked up over 1,000 all-purpose yards for Dow's offense. Here he is again. He stretches it out as the corner, and now he picks up a first down to midfield. He stepped out about three yards shy on his first carry of the game. Well, you know, they... Uh, number 16, Nick Soraki. That was a good run by Soraki, but I'm kind of surprised that Western is giving the Dow the perimeter, uh, just letting him run to the, to the outside there. You know, Soraki surprised me last week. Six touchdowns in the game. Is that it? Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that, that was really surprising. I, you know, Three rushing, three pass receiving. His third straight carry. Dragged down from behind by Taylor Pop, the inside linebacker, and one oh, of Bay City Western standout no. players. And now we've already got fisticuffs along the sideline. And Punches we, were thrown. And we're going to have an ejection. A good player, too. Holy cow. It's only the first quarter, first drive of the game for Dow. Well, in the replay out here, we're going to see a uh, the block out here is, is going on in the corner. And there's the fisticuffs going on. Oh, that's, that's wow. going to be sad. That is one of Dow's better players as well, Chase Perry, the senior. He's a two-way player. He has a active role in Dow's offense, and he also has a big role in the secondary for Dow's defense. I mean, there were three swings there. I, yeah. I can only imagine what was said. Well, we're going to see if they've ejected him. That's, that. See, the problem with the ejection is not only are you out of this game, but you are out of the next game. And if you're out of the next game, that's Mount Pleasant. That's the league. The referees are still conferencing, and originally I thought that they were going to assign personal foul penalties to either team. It was Owen Van Driesch who got tangled up with Chase Perry of Dow, and then the two players exchanged swings. And that is the case. But there was a, a second personal foul call taunting against Dow, and so that backs Dow up into a first and 15 situation from the 46. Not the note you really wanted to start it exactly. this game on. As I say, uh, Chase Perry is very fortunate he did not get ejected. Just waiting for everything to settle down here on a rainy night at Midland Community Stadium. Jason Watkins right there getting an explanation from the officials. That's also just what was so surprising about that. You never see a Jason Watkins coach team really act like never, that. Never, never. So it is second down now. Delayed handoff, Saraki again. A gash run into Bay City Western territory, and it brings up third down and about six. Nick Soraki, number 16, on the carry for the Chargers. Brought down by Western Warriors, number 33 and number 25. It's a very manageable third and five.
Shane Astrike, the 6'4", 200-pound senior quarterback, is having a fantastic season. He leads the Saginaw Valley League in passing yards. He's a pretty good runner, too. First down carry for the Dow quarterback all the way to the 30-yard line, make it the 28. You know, he's a big, tall guy. He's also, he plays hockey, and he plays rough hockey. So he's not afraid Shane, to go in there and take a hit. And, you know, he's not your normal kind of quarterback. That they, he runs and he looks at people to, to hit people. I think he'd be a great safety also. 6'4", 200 pounds. Good frame, and then, again, when you slap some shoulder pads on him, either on the gridiron or on the rink, not afraid to put some weight behind it. Here's a first and 10. Option read, Soraki. Big hole off right tackle. Touchdown. Touchdown, Dow. Touchdown, Charger. I don't think he was touched. Was not touched. Beautiful option by, Sor by a strike. So really the only hiccup on that drive for Dow was the penalty as we take a look at this touchdown. Well, when they ran that little option, they ran a nice little option where the ball is kicked out and then Sorocki's going to run right into the end zone without any trouble. Untouched. Well, remember, Coach, as you said, six touchdowns last week for Sorocki. He's got one now, so let, He's the, on his way. let the count begin for Sorocki, the all-conference Saginaw Valley League running back, defensive back. He catches pretty well, too. And Zach Kuhn tacks on the extra point. It is 7-0 down in the first quarter. Well, again, now just take a look at what happened. Western goes three and out, has an average kick, which really should have been fielded. Uh, ball ends up sitting on the ground, and Dowlin takes the ball, rolls down the field, fights off 15-yard penalty without any trouble. It was not a good three-play sequence for Bay City Western. Terrible. They did not do what you think that they have to do, and that's run right at run Dow. Run right at Dow, and and again, slow this game down. Don't let, take your first down. I mean, they immediately went to throwing the ball on second down, and then instead of going for a, a 10 or 12 yard gain, went for it all. Now I'm all for that, I mean, but you gotta be able to move the ball down the field. You can't throw a 70 yard pass, you wanna throw maybe a 25 yard pass for a touchdown. Bay City Western won its first game last week since all the way back in 2016. They did not win a game last year. Offense erupted for 45 points against John Glenn last week. And it was the first win for Bay City Western's new coach, Chris Willerts, former standout defensive end at Michigan State. Kuhn is ready for the kick. Doty and Trailer back deep to receive for Western. Signals cross. The ball caroms into the end zone. It's a touchback. This is really the kind of night that might be better for that uh, squib kick, the ball that kind of travels around. It's a little slippery to hold on to. But, uh, hey, again, it's easy up here. And really good placement on yeah. that traditional kick for Kuhn. Split the two Bay City Western returners right down the middle. Just a bullet point for you, Coach. Chase Perry is not in the game right now for Dow. If he's still on the sideline, they're letting him cool down for a while. Western has a big offensive line, and they're pretty stout on the defensive front as well. This is Blake Michek. Pretty good run on first down, but the ball squirted out. And it is Dow football. If you remember earlier, we talked about limit turnovers. And most of all, limit turnovers Okay, you can see him going off the corner here. And as he makes that move, the ball does score it out. And guess who fell on top of it? Nick Soraki. Nick Soraki's everywhere. He sure is. He is everywhere. 
He's quite the player. Number 16 in green. Might as well ID him on just about every play, offense or defense. A strike kicks him out of the backfield there. And Siraki was not looking for that intended pass, incomplete. Cheney strikes pass intended for number 16, Nick Siraki is incomplete. That bring up second down and 10. That's one Chargers. of Dow's highlights that they like to do. They get a, 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 a turnover inside the 40 yard line they immediately go for the touchdown. And what they do is they run five vertical. They run Soraki out of the backfield, right down the middle of the field. The other receivers take off and somebody's gonna be open, especially the way Bay City is covering in their three, in the, they're, they're playing a four deep without a safety, so they, they're gonna have their problems. Four wide here on second and 10. Quarterback draw, a strike, nearly a first down run if he didn't get it. First down. Move the chains for down. Again, the threat of A-Strike being able to run uh, with the number of defenders back there trying to stop the pass, he's, he's going to have an open night tonight. And when you have the four wide, but also have to, as a defense, account for the quarterback running the ball, it's almost like you don't have enough defenders on the field. And you have to account for Soraki. Where is Soraki? Not only do you have four wide, but you have Soraki somewhere. Soraki's in the backfield now to the right of A-Strike. He's joined by Brennan Doyle on the left side of the quarterback. There's a pitch to Soraki. He nearly slipped through the line, rolled down around the 10. Nice little shovel pass. You know, Dow has, Dow has all those plays. I mean, Dow does not have a play that says, okay, I'm going to hand you the ball and go and run. Their, their plays are a little slick all the way through. And you got to be ready for them. It's an advanced offense. It takes a defense that is something called eye discipline. And that is you have a job, your, your eye, eyes must be disciplined on that job, not the ball. The ball will come to you. That's Soraki again. So elusive near the pylon and ruled out just short of the goal line. And again, an outstanding run. I mean, just he's very slippery. Lower body is always moving. He's always moving forward. Once he turns that corner, he is moving forward. Ryan Sage checks into the game for Dow. This is a first and goal scenario from right around the three yard line. Dow is trying to convert a Bay City Western fumble into points. Bay City Western has run just four offensive plays so far. Soraki drags white jerseys with him for his second touchdown of the game. <laughs> and, and you know, that, that was a straight play. You know, turn around, him the ball, go in the end zone. Dow spreads you out enough where there's just not enough people in there to take care of it a normal run play. And one of the defenders that he dragged with him from about two yards out was Taylor Pop, the middle linebacker for Bay City Western, a darn good player. Good player. Taylor Pop's a good player. Soraki checks in at six feet, 180. Trim, but not huge by any means. Goon boots it home. 14-0 Dow, a pretty fast start for the Chargers on this rainy night. Now, now this is just a straight run. Right here, a little handoff. To, but watch him carry, right? Carry the linebacker into the end zone. But you take a look at the linebacker. He is reaching instead of tackling. And this has been Western's problem all year long. They don't tackle anybody. They reach, grab, try to drag you down. You, you don't hear a tackle. You, you see the guy go down, but he's being dragged down. And again, now the question becomes, when a team gets beat, you know, we, we see they haven't won a game last year. They finally won a game last week against a very, very poor John Glenn team that lost their quarterback. You can watch Will they fold? Because that's what happens when when you when you're be, being beat by 40 points a game. The attitude on the sideline is, oh no, 
Here we go again. And that's what you got to be careful of. Bay City Western has had a tough schedule this season. They played Traverse City Central, Davison, Midland already this year. And there have been some similar moments like this game already against Dow. And Chris exactly. Willard, the head coach for Western, has been proud of the way that his team has not folded in situations like this. Doty on the return for Western. And solid kick return coverage keeps Doty off the 25-yard line. Doty is the grandson of uh, a former coach at Western, Al Doty. Excellent coach, excellent coach. A legacy player, Doty is one of Bay City Western's more targeted receivers. Eight catches on the year for number five. He's the split end at the bottom of your screen right now. Up the middle, a minimal gain. Now, one of the things that I keep watching when you watch offensive linemen, what, where are they when the tackle's made? Are they in front of or equal to the ball carrier, or are they way behind the ball carrier? In that case right there, the only person who was out in front of the ball carrier were the Dow High guys. None of the offensive linemen got out onto the second, second level of uh, defenders. Pop again. It's thrown down in the backfield by John O'Connor, six foot, 175 pound senior on that down defensive line. Western Warrior number 44 on the carry, brought down by number 66, John O'Connor for the Chargers. That'll bring up third down for the Warriors. Now I noticed that Dow brought up a sophomore. His name is Charlie Huckins. He's numbered 79, he's 6'5", 320. Doesn't even have the lightning bolts on his no, helmet. No, he's not. You have to earn those. <laughs> Third and eight. Down the seam, high pass right through the hands of the intended target, CJ Trail, and then he was drilled on the back end of that play. Well, let's take a look and see if Dow's going to come after this punt, which really at some point they should. Hard hit administered by Braden Wake, who's getting some extended playing time in Dow secondary because of Chase Perry's ejection. Shepard sends a looping kick, shallow, and it belatedly crosses the 50-yard line, just barely into Dow territory down at the 45. Feels like we've been playing a lot longer than we have, just about six minutes to go in the first quarter only, but with Bay City Western not moving the football, Dow scoring pretty quickly, it's not going to take a lot of time off the clock. No, it's not. Dow, Dow games are, I always say, they're forever. They, they're forever because the, the clock stops so often. Between first downs and incomplete passes, uh, you, you have that. Leg on the play. See what this penalty is. Movement on Dow brings up first and 15. Illegal procedure called against the Chargers. Those are really the only setbacks Dow's offense has had in this game so far, just a couple of penalties. Out of that tripod formation, another flag. And this is sometimes where, I don't know if Dow gets a little too creative. Right, right, this is, that's a very good way of putting it. And there's your, the player that you just mentioned, Charlie Hunkins, getting some tutelage on the sideline in one of his first varsity games, if not his first. It's first and 20. 
Crowd just tries to stay set. Owen McCaffrey at the top of your screen. Very relaxed coverage for Bay City Western's defense. In the flat, pass is caught. Evan Mativa rumbles his way into Bay City Western territory. See, I, 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 we were talking about this earlier about Evan Mativa, and I think he's a star in the making. I, he has great size, great speed. He catches everything. He's an outstanding defensive player. Um, a real credit. I, I know his family. They, I coached his father. I, I just think this kid's going to be a great player. That was his 14th catch of the season. He's also run the ball 16 times, so a balanced player. And now a timeout. Timeout called by the Chargers. A second down and about six coming up for Dow. And it's interesting looking at Western's defense, only three down linemen. They run sort of a 3-3-5 base defense. And Dow, with the exception of that short pass, has been really content to just run at them. Well, what happens is that everybody backs off. So really all you have are the three, the three down linemen and two linebackers. So the rule is, what do you have in the box? We have five in the box. Five in the box says run outside or throw the ball. The moment, uh, you know, they can't handle anything and because everybody is backed off. They're so concerned about the passing game that you can run the perimeter easy on them. Dow is two for two on touchdown drives tonight. This is their third possession of the game. Homecoming affair here at Midland Community Stadium. We'll have the halftime show for you with the marching band and all of the pop and circumstance that comes with this football game on the schedule. Soraki in motion after a pump. Soraki right up the middle, makes the first man miss, one man to beat. He's got his third touchdown of the first quarter. Is he something or what? That was two beautiful moves in the middle of the field, made both. See, see here again, let's take a look at the replay. When you see Soraki, that's, that was that man in motion, goes up the middle of the field, catches the ball, and then does what he does best, and that is he makes people miss. Got around Blake Michek and then Owen Van Driesch. And remember, Coach, Dow dialed up a very similar play where they motioned Earlier. Soraki out of the backfield. They he, missed wasn't look, he wasn't looking. That time they connect for a touchdown. Kuhn is three for three on the night, and it's 21-0 Dow rolling here in the first quarter. And to that point, that drive took less than a minute off the clock. Again. They score fast. You have to be prepared for them. And again, is Soraki under any rush? Well, three down linemen, five offensive linemen, no rush. Is there any stunt by the linebacker? No, because he's so concerned about getting out of there and hopefully maybe helping with the passes. So there's absolutely no rush. So the quarterback can set his feet, throw the ball, at his, and, and watch how the ball comes out of his hand. This is the beauty of it of a strike the ball comes out of his hand light and with great spin you know it, some baseball players who play quarterback the ball comes out of their hand their, their elbows way up in the air and you throw a heavy ball his shoulder movement and his release is at the perfect level to throw and the ball comes out with great spin which makes it easy to catch He's tall, he's 6'4", he doesn't have to worry about with that lower arm slot, a pass getting batted down by a lot of defensive linemen in this league. And he's a veteran. This is a two-year starter. Dow somewhat unusually had a platoon system at quarterback last year, but now it's a strikes show. Beautiful angled kick by Zach Kuhn gets out of the side of the end zone for a touchback. So if you're Bay City Western right now, Coach, forget 21 nothing. You just need to get a first down at this get it, point. Get, you got to test Dow a little bit. You got to test, and not on the perimeter. Dow loves the perimeter. They practice against the perimeter all the time. You got to run at them a little bit. Again, one of my keys to the game is slow the game down. This, and you you got to slow Dow down. 
you, you as an offense have to slow down. But they're in spread offense because spread offense is cool. You know, it's not, it's not always winning football. Quick pass to Michek. Running laterally, and again, green jerseys flock to the football. Blake Rosenbrock was leading the charge for Dow from the linebacking court. Okay, so this is one of my great beefs about today's football, today's idea of football. That was a two-yard pass. I mean, you should be able to run for two yards. It was a two-yard pass that got, that got absolutely nothing. Western ran the ball very well against John Glenn's defense last week. This is a much stouter Dow defense here as Pop slips through the line of scrimmage across the 25. But they are not running the ball as much as they did last no, week against John all. Glenn. Not at all. And I think that kind of play right there, Pop, and use those big linemen, use those big linemen to move the linemen, the other the defensive linemen out of there. Dow defensive linemen, if you take a look, they're small. You know, uh, except for Huckins, who, if you had an average, he, he kind of makes the average go up. But uh, most of the other guys are 180, 185. Only two down linemen here for Dow. Mativa standing up on the bottom of your screen on a hitch. The pass is caught for Good Bay catch. City Western's first, first down of the ball game. That's Aaron Norfleet, the junior. Now, again, that was a nice, easy pass pattern. Uh, Northrop goes out, kept, turns around, stops. The ball is able to be thrown to him easily. It's catching the ball on the run that gives a lot of receivers trouble. And it takes a certain kind of quarterback to throw to receivers on the run, too. It takes a lot of practice by that quarterback, right? Pop is chopped down behind the line of scrimmage by Caleb Studebaker, the junior. Studebaker will end up making most of the tackles tonight. He has a he has a true nose for the football. Now you know his dad a little uh, bit too, his right? His dad played for me and was the same size and the same type of player. Studebaker. Very tenacious. Caleb is 5'9", 155, but you see him making plays in the backfield tonight just like his dad, apparently. Loss of maybe half a yard. He checked the motion man. Pop managed to get to the corner, then was almost sideswiped out of bounds on the play by Brennan Doyle. Brennan Doyle makes a lot of tackles. He's he's a true safety. He makes he. He, yeah, I, I call players like uh, Brennan Doyle the eraser because they, they save you the, from the mistake. This will be interesting to see what Western does on third down because they've been unsuccessful so far. They have just one first down in the game. They need the 43 to convert. Frizel throws on the run, it sails high and incomplete. His man was open, but well short of the sticks as he targeted C.J. Trail. That was very interesting. They, they sent uh, the running back in motion one way, rolled the quarterback out to his weak side, left side, and that's a very difficult pass in normal situation. In a rainy night, that's a pretty much an impossible pass. So we see Ben Shepard again on for the punt and Nick Soraki back deep to receive. Soraki already has three touchdowns tonight for Dow. Pinned against the sideline, he doesn't get much. I see there's a, that element of what I call hidden yardage. Uh, well, it wasn't much of a return, but the ball didn't roll another 10 yards. So it didn't roll 10, you picked up five, so it's a plus 15. That's hidden yardage. 
and plus it gives you an opportunity now. The, the ball starts at the 40-yard line, which is always great field position. Just a, a subtle veteran move that you get from a guy like Nick Soraki with three years on the varsity roster. Mativa on the carry. Evan Mativa, he's, he runs in there hard, and that's exactly what he does. He give him the ball, let him run inside, beats up on linebackers. Five yard gain there for the 6'2", 240 pound junior. Outstanding size on Mativa. And he's averaging right around eight yards per carry. That was his 17th of the season. One rushing touchdown, two receiving touchdowns for Mativa in his second year on the varsity roster. Look out, Soraki in motion. On a sweep. That's A.V. Rivera who turns on the Jets and gets deep into Bay City Western territory inside the 30. Well, that was an impressive run by Rivera. He got out on the perimeter. He was led out there by Soraki, who makes a great block and is able to get around the corner. And all of a sudden, did you notice the wheels? The wheels on Rivera were impressive. All right, so here we see Sarakiat in motion. Nativa leading the way. There's the block off the corner. They turn him. Soraki dumps the, the force on the corner. And there is Evan Mativa back to game action. A touchdown for Dow. Touchdown, Chargers. Evan Mativa, I tell you. Evan Mativa on the touchdown. A 29-yard rumble for Mativa, his fourth touchdown of the season. See, this, those are the kind of things that make Dow's offense incredibly difficult to stop. You've got to worry about where is Soraki. You know, it's like where's Waldo. You have to find Soraki. So you have to take care of Soraki, and all of a sudden. You, you take care of Soraki, you find him, and they give the ball to Mativa, and you see how powerful Mativa is. He runs through people. And then he ran away from the entire Western team. He ran through some great blocking by his offensive line on the left side in particular. Merrick Belgiorno, the junior, set the edge, and Mativa does the long Zach snapping Zach too. So he has a hand in the extra point attempt, Making converted by Zach Kuhn. 28 nothing. Okay, yeah. we're going to watch on the corner, on the perimeter, what happens out here with Mativa. Oh, sorry, let's go. That was one play before. Here's Mativa out there just running away from the, from the Western players. Certainly can't complain about the start for Dow. All of this damage done in the first quarter. 47 seconds left, 28 nothing. Does it feel now, like we've been here a while? <laughs> should be 47 seconds till <laughs> halftime. You know, I'll tell you, last week we did the uh, Midland Mount Pleasant game, and I looked up, and it was three minutes to go in the fourth quarter, and I said, this is the fastest game I can remember. And it's not that way tonight, but that's, that's Dow football. That's the way they play. They play fast and furious, and they give you no quarter. They're not going to let up on you. You you have you have to coach up. When you play Dow and you play uh, a team like Dow, you have to coach up on them. This ball is going to bounce. Picked up at the 10 by C.J. Trail. And he's dragged down around the neck right at the 20. Bay City Western wanted a horse collar penalty, but even in the rain, homecoming festivities continue. Dow trying to celebrate on the football field with a win over Bay City Western. You know, you just hate to have a night like this for homecoming. Yes. It's just awful. I don't think the band is going to play at halftime. Um, I, we're just not going to be able to have it the kind of night that you would like to have for your homecoming. Especially you got you got a victory like this. I mean, sorry, 28 nothing. We'll probably have a running clock by halftime. Me check in motion. Frizel throws high again. 
you know one person who I think is probably okay with the, the stripped down pomp and circumstance here? Jason Watkins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's not mess around. It's get this game going and get it over. The biggest problem you have in a game like this, you got a 28 0 lead, your team starts to lose its focus a little bit, and and you don't like that. And then you always worry about something happening to one of your star players, and that's already happened. Norfleet on the slant is brought down by Rosenbrock, just shy of the 30. That was a good pass and a good reception. A manageable third down here for Bay City Western. And it doesn't look like they're going to get this playoff before the first quarter ends. And that does it, 28 nothing Dow after the first quarter. And again, you're watching this HH Dow versus Bay City Western homecoming football game on the MCTV network. MCTV's channels can be found on Charter Communications cable channels 188 to 191 in Midland. You can also find MCTV under channel 99 on AT&T's UVerse. Check out MCTV's website at cityofmidlandmi.gov slash MCTV for playback dates and times more dates and times to follow on MPS TV 190. You can also view this program online at the Midland Public Schools YouTube channel, which we also encourage you to check out. Alongside Coach Frank Altimore, my name is Chris Fosters, and this game has gone exactly the way Dow wanted it to through just Absolutely. one quarter. Perfect, perfect quarter for Dow. And just, uh, again, I'm always surprised at Bay City Western because I look out there, they have good size up front. Uh, they have pretty good athletes, but they just, they don't, they don't win. They don't win, they don't play. They, you know, if you take a look, they don't tackle. And if you take a look, they don't tackle in space. And today, that's the number one thing you have to teach, tackling in space. Especially against a spread attack team like Dow. On third and two, a flag flies in, and Dow might have 12 men on the field. At least that's what the referees are counting right now. I count 11. Yeah, so do I. So the flag is picked up and waved off. Okay. Bay City Western can't be happy about that. Fingers and toes and one more. There's a direct snap to pop. And he's gobbled up at the line of scrimmage. John O'Connor was the first one to wrap him up, and he had some help. That was third down. Dow was all over that one. Well, Western now has the wind, and so this should help their kicker. Western needs every advantage it can get with Nick Soraki back deep for Dow. Good roll. Soraki plays the high hop and is brought down after a good, negligible return. Very good open field tackle. Back to work for Shane A Strike and this Down Chargers offense. A-Strike is completing 63% of his passes this year. He's got 16 touchdowns to just six interceptions. Wearing the number two, you think of Bruce Mann, recent quarterback Bruce for Dow Mann. High, who also captained a pretty prolific offense recently. Dow with a win tonight officially becomes playoff eligible with its fifth win of the year. No, six wins. You need six wins. Beg your pardon. They need, they need one more after this one. Thank you. Five, you can get in. You can get in. Here's Soraki. Tiptoes down the sideline. You can get in if your opponents have good records. And that is your opponents that you lost. So if you're five and four, and the four losses that you have, your opponents have been good teams. Well, that can't work. Dow has to get six wins. Well, I, I don't want to play devil's advocate here, but look, if Dow finishes the season with five wins, which is possible because they've got a tough two games left. They've got Mount Pleasant and Midland after this. Their four losses, conceivably, could be to Mount Pleasant, Midland, Lapeer, 
and Grand and, Blank. And Grand Blank. Those right. are four pretty good teams. I think yeah, Dow could they, get in with could, that. They might. They might. You're absolutely right. A strike. Throws up a Hail Mary that was nearly intercepted by Owen Van Driesch, and it brings up third down. And it's a late hit. Like on the plate? Late hit on O strike on the sideline. Right on cue, coach. Now that that was a surprising throw by A strike, because normally he'll just throw that ball out of bounds, and just to throw it up. For, he rarely throws it up for grabs. He always has a purpose in his throw. And that was an out of system play for Dow. Really, the first one we've right. seen tonight. And Bay City Western just can't get out of its own way. No, it's, that's a that's a silly, silly, silly penalty. I, and I can hear the frustration as the former I, coach that just drives I, you nuts. It does, it does. I, f I feel bad for the for the Western team because I know how frustrated they are at this. First down from the 49 of Dow. That's Brennan. Do no, a strike kept it. Beg your pardon. And then he throws short of Nick Siraki. Boy, there was all kinds of option reading. And yes, there was. Play there action There was a lot there. of things going on there. There was the, the fake draw and then the throw down the field. Yeah, that was. Uh, Boy, I tell you what, Brennan Doyle, for a guy who did not get the ball there, did a heck of a job selling yes, like he, he did. did. Yes, he did. Do you get the sense that Dow is going deeper into its playbook here, up 28 nothing, just to try some things out? I think, yeah, I do. I, I sometimes think their, their playbook is so deep, mm -hmm. they may never get to the bottom of it. <laughs> Soraki. See, to me, that's the playbook right there. First down run. Give the ball to find. Give the ball to Soraki. Throw the ball to Soraki. Give the ball to Mativa, and occasionally let a strike run. That's the offense. There sure is a lot of window dressing, that's for sure. But I think when you strip it down, that's Dow's DNA. A.V. Rivera checks into the game in the offensive backfield for Dow. He had a big run earlier in the first quarter. Dow on the move again, ball inside the Western 40. McCaffrey in motion. He takes the jet sweep. Rivera lead blocks for him. McCaffrey down the sideline. A Dow first down. Carried by charger number 20. Western's having a terrible time on the perimeter. Uh, Dow's doing a great job of blocking, and and when they block, they, they not only block, they turn, and so they they produce this wall. If you if you watch them when they block, is it like a turn, reach block? They reach block, they turn them, they produce this little bit of a wall, and as a result, the Western players actually run into each other. Cluttered backfield for Dow, and there goes Soraki out of it. Same play. See how the ball, watch, watch. there's. The That's Studebaker who draws contact along the boundary. Tackle on the play by Trevor Newmeyer of Western. Dow does two things great. I mean, besides all the other window dressing, two things football coaches love. They tackle in space and they block in space. We don't see that that often. Watch when we come around the corner here. When they come around the corner, watch how nice that is. There's the block right there in the corner. Here comes a blast by Mativa, and then another block by Mativa. You see, they turn, and they turn. They turn so they're looking right at all the pursuit. A much different offense, but I think that's what someone said about Lombardi's Green Bay Packers. They block and tackle well. They block and <laughs> still blocking and tackling. Now a pistol formation. Studebaker again is knifed down at the line of scrimmage. Strong tackle on the play by Norfleet, the two-way player for Western. And here comes a third and about four. As you can tell, it takes a lot of people to make a football game happen. Please help me thank all these folks. Let's call it third and three. Dow has the ball at the 19. They need to get to the 16. 
Well, they're in four down territory. They, I mean, they're not going to kick a field goal this far out. Two tight ends set. Rivera, as a flag comes in the offensive backfield, Rivera is bottled up short of the sticks. Holding. Flag out of play. Holding called against the Chargers. Western might decline this because it would bring up fourth down. And it is fourth down. And here comes Zach Kuhn, number six, for a field goal attempt, presumably. Soraki to hold, and Evan Mativa is the long snapper. This is a 37 yard kick for Kuhn. Plenty of length. And it's good. He just wow, cleared the crossbar. Good, now, good looking kick into the wind. Okay. I like that. And here's why. Kuhn now has the confidence to kick a 37 yarder. He hasn't had to do that all year. So right now he says to himself, okay, I can kick that distance. Beautiful kick. Beautiful protection. Not much. Not much. There wasn't much effort on the part of the Western guys to block it, so I'm not sure if Western hasn't mailed it in at this point. Boy, I tell you what, you could really see the effect that the wind had on that ball, and there's right. the rain, because uh, that ball looked like it had a lot more length on it, and then it just sort of dove right over the crossbar. It was a very good kick. A very good kick, and very it's 31 nothing down. I thought in that series, Dow took their foot off the throttle, uh, off the pedal a little bit, and uh, I don't think there was a pass things. attempt on that no, drive. No, no passes, and some of their runs were out of formations they don't normally run them out of. Kuhn with the boot, and it checks up on trail, and he wisely just flops on top of it. Dow had Mike Erickson closing quickly on what was a live ball. Remember. But it is Bay City Western football with 8.47 to go until halftime. Now, Bay City Western does have a two quarterback offense. And it looks like the second of those two quarterbacks, Carter Bacigalupo, is into the game for the first time for Western. He's a junior. He saw action on the varsity roster as a sophomore. Bad snap. He gets the pitch away to Newmeyer. There was a collision, and Newmeyer kept going forward. Second down. Pretty good run. I mean, even though it, it, it didn't get many yards, it was still a good run. Oh, got five yards. Very good run. Bay City Western has two primary ball carriers. Taylor Pop, who we've seen a lot. He's more of the inside back. And then Trevor Newmeyer, who just carried the ball there, has more of the perimeter type speed. Here's Newmeyer again. Two yard gain. Again, I want you to to look at this, it's a five yard gain, a two yard gain, but the offensive linemen are way behind the running back. You don't see anybody from Western getting up into the second level. And that's what makes runs go. John O'Connor, number 66 for Dow, has had a very good game on the defensive line for the Chargers. He picked up another tackle on that two yard run. Timeout. 
timeout called by the Warriors. That's Bay City Western's first with 7.25 to go until halftime. And uh, third and three coming up for Bay City Western. Very important that they pick this first down up and just try and keep Dow's offense off the field, if nothing else. Well, again, we're trying to talk about this idea of slowing the game down. You know, get your first down, move those chains, get another movement of the chains, get a third movement of the chains, try to run it into and try to go back into that locker room at halftime and regroup. This is the most important thing. Can you regroup? And that's definitely something that Bay City Western's first year head coach, Chris Willards, is going to try and instill in this program, a, a program that everyone around here knows is in a bit of a slump right now. And Western thinks that Willards is the guy to do that, given his track record as a coach and as a player at well, Michigan State. Absolutely is. He absolutely is, but he has to change that culture a little bit. But you know this, Rome was not built in a night. It takes time. It takes a strong winter program. It takes people believing in themselves. It takes coaches that care. Bachi Galupo still at the controls, and that snap is loose. Barrel rolls on top of it, and that's a loss all the way back to the 12-yard line. And that coming out of the timeout is what happened on third and two. And that is a disaster. So now you got a punt. Well, now, will Dahl go after it? If we take a look at the replay here, you can see where the ball gets snapped. See, there's a little bit of hesitation on the part of the center because he, he's looking, he's more concerned about the stunner coming in than he is about the, the ball being snapped. Timeout called by the Warriors. Now, tell you, you watch all good centers, and you watch the ones on Saturday on, in particular and on Sundays. That head goes down a little bit, and that tells that tells them where the quarterback is. Now, on that snap right there, the quarter, the center never looked back. You got to have a little bit of a when you're snapping the ball, it just it's a blind snap, but it, it's not a blind snap. I mean, your your eyes have told you where to snap the ball when you took it. Just a quick head head dip and go. There are teams that they they uh, the offensive line goes on the head dip. You know that's that's their signal to to take off on the ball. I miss the quarterback under the center. See, and even if I was coaching today, while I'd have some aspects of shotgun in there. I would never give up the quarterback under the center. I'm never going to give up uh, an, an automatic sneak that's there, a quarterback sneak in short yardage. Here's the punt from Ben Shepard's end zone. Nick Parker mistimed the drop on that ball. It did not appear that he touched it, but still a Heads up play by Garrett Daniels to down it and keep the ball in Dow hands. Again, everything has gone Dow's way, and the field position battle, perhaps unsurprisingly so, in a 31-0 game is also being come, becoming increasingly tilted in Dow's favor. Well, that penalty was awful for that. Or not penalty, the, the uh, fumble was just an awful move. And he gave Dow the ball at midfield. A strike. Out of real estate, and he throws it out of bounds. Mativa was in the vicinity, but there was coverage on the play by Thane Deming, the senior defensive back for Bay City Western. Good coverage. Good coverage by Western on that play right there. They weren't fooled. And you almost wouldn't have faulted them had they been fooled. Soraki has been the bell cow tonight Absolutely. for Dow. Dow has not had to punt in the first half. There's Mativa in the slot, bottom of your screen.
Doyle has it. Gaping hole up the middle. Inside the 35. That was a touchdown saving tackle by Pop. Carried by charger number 22, Brennan Doyle. Touchdown saving tackle. Chargers pick up their first down. Doyle is so quick. He is so quick in there. Here you go. You're going to watch this. There's the fake. There's the little little side draw. But watch Doyle. He just got a little quickness right in there. And, and as I say, that was the last guy. Good job. There's an injured Bay City Western player down back in Dow territory. It's the first injury we've had of this game. And we'd like to remind you that if you like watching your favorite high school events on MCTV, stay tuned this fall for more games and events on the MCTV network. MCTV volunteers and staff will be televising marching band showcases, Midland versus Dow football coming up in a couple of weeks. Midland versus Dow Volleyball held the same week. Dow versus Midland Girls Swimming. And check out MCTV on Facebook to follow us and get up-to-date information on all programming and events at MCTV. 31-0 Dow midway through the second quarter. Dow scored on every possession. And they have the ball in Bay City Western territory again. Western has one first down. One or two, I think. I think they might two? have two. Yes, they completed a pass uh, in there. But when you're talking about one first down or two, you get the point. Looks like the player for Bay City Western is about to be helped off the field. We'll step aside and be back shortly for more on MCTV Sports. Midland Community Stadium out of the injury timeout. Reed Williams for Bay City Western was helped off the field. And on the first play back, there was a penalty on the play, a hold against Dow, and that negates a run of around five yards for Brennan Doyle. That was a unique formation for Dow. They lined up in the old wing tee, full house backfield, two tight ends. I didn't know Dow had even had two tight ends on their roster. <laughs> Well, I think Evan Mativa can yeah. do just about everything. And frankly, I wouldn't put it past Nick Soraki to line up as a tight end or something like that. We hear that he actually has played on the offensive line in scout team. <laughs> There's a lot of enthusiasm on the Dow roster, a lot of guys who just love to play the game. Practices sound like a lot of fun for Jason Watkins' bunch, especially when you're four and two on the season. That always helps. This is not fun right now, break. a first and 20. Big break for Western to get a first and 20. They got to take advantage of it. Option, Soraki. Roped out of bounds by Van Driesch. Well, something came okay, flying off. Nick for the I think it's a, a wristband. Brought down by Western Warrior number wristband with 500 plays on it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to sure it's going to be a wristband. Came off of Soraki. All of a sudden, it looked like a, a go fish game had broken out or something like that. Here's a second and eight. A strike. Quick strike, nearly intercepted. That's something you rarely ever see, two receivers together. Now remember, 
McDowell's main receiver wide out is Chase Perry. Chase Perry's out of the game. So you're going to have a little bit of confusion sometimes with receivers out there. Although Dow practices with a lot of receivers. Perry is Dow's second leading receiver. Nick Soraki, go figure, has the most receiving yards on the team for Dow. And Perry is the number two receiver. Soraki's the number one in the league, and Perry is number two in the league. And A strike leads the league in passing yards. There's the pitch. Soraki, first down and more into the red zone. So two options get you your penalty plus. Ball carried by charger number 16, Nick Soraki. That's the thing. After the first and 20, you saw Western had seven in the box approximately, and Dow just spread them out, ran outside like that. We well, see it's okay to have the number you have in the box as long as your defenders are able to come up on the perimeter and make plays. De Western's defenders don't make the play. End zone pass, was that caught in bounds? No. Oh, wow. That That's a, Brennan Doyle. That was a great catch. Fantastic catch. Boy, that was awfully close. Here comes the replay on it. We're going to see Doyle make a great effort out here. Nice fake by A strike. He's open. He's open. <laughs> I don't know. Gosh. Oh, ref. Open your eyes. That was a good one. That was awfully close. That was a good You know, you just have to be one foot in. That was right through the hands of a Bay City Western cornerback. Trevor Newmeyer might have taken his eyes off the ball at the last minute. Owen McCaffrey was the intended receiver for Dow, and there was uh, clearly some miscommunication between quarterback and receiver. Uh, again, two receivers in the same area. That, that's not normal. You'll see Mativa in the short flat and McCaffrey a little further back. There's your, there's your stop. See how all the receivers are right in the same area? And I think that ball sailed on yeah, A strike does. a it little is, bit. It, I think Matiba was the intended target. Soraki in motion. Lead blockers ahead. And Soraki stays in bounds. He's got a touchdown. That is an absolute, that is a Le'Veon Bell run. If you take a look, I'm, I'm jogging, I'm jogging, I'm jogging, I'm sprinting, and now I'm going to hit somebody. I mean, it's it's a Le'Veon Bell type run. What? Well, just watch the beauty of this run, especially from this angle. I'm, I'm jogging, I'm jogging. Okay, there's the block. Okay, now now I'm going to hit somebody. There, okay, get out of my way. And, oh, that's embarrassing for seven. You got to do better than that, player. Trevor Newmeyer did not wrap up. Soraki made him pay. And credit Caleb Studebaker and Brennan Doyle for some outstanding blocking. Again, running backs leading the charge for Soraki. And that's not to take anything away from the no. offensive line either. 38 nothing, and Soraki has got four touchdowns. You said. Before the game, Soraki had six touchdowns last, last week, almost like, well, that's not going to happen tonight. But gosh, he's two thirds of the way there. That was an incredible run. I like to tell you that was absolutely fabulous because, especially from this angle, because it comes right at you. There's your first block right there. Good knockdown block. And then you turn around and there's the second block. Now there's the push and he gets in the end zone. That is very special. That is just special. I think you hit the nail on the head with the analogy to Le'Veon Bell. The patience yeah. to set up your blocks, then the acceleration. Exactly. And then the physical play, the truck stick. Well, one thing about Throcky, and we know this, he knows where the end zone is. 
You know, there's some some players don't know where the end zone is. They they just keep running around, having a good old time. He he's always going to the end zone. Dow's offense has really struggled in the second quarter, only 10 points. <laughs> Come on. CJ Trail on the return. And he's stuck at the 30 yard line by Blake Rosenbrock. We'll see who's at the controls for Western. Jack Frizel started the game at quarterback. The last drive was manned by Carter Bacigalupo. Bacigalupo's out there. Number two in white with the long black sleeves. No touchdowns, three interceptions passing this season for Bacigalupo. He comes in with 269 yards through the air. Looks like Western's going to pass instead on the ground to Taylor Pop. And he's knifed down by Rosenbrock, who's working up a lather here. Two quick tackles, one on special teams and one on first down for the junior linebacker. Ball carried by Western Warrior number four. Rosenbrock, a new face on this yeah. Dow varsity roster for those who might be following the program on the periphery, but he was very much on the coaching staff's radar last year as a sophomore, but missed the entire year with an injury. Probably a guy who would have contributed in some way last year had he stayed healthy. That's batted down at the line of scrimmage by Sam Martin, the senior defensive end. Now, okay, so that was a screenplay. If we had replay on that, you would see all the linemen are 15 yards. All right, so here we go. Watch, watch where the linemen are on this replay. It's, it's going to be a screen, but there's no see how far downfield they are away from the screener. I mean, they've got to get a, see. There's got to be a maybe a five to seven yard separation there, not a 12 yard separation because everybody gets behind it and makes the tackle. That almost would have been a penalty had it been caught for an ineligible man downfield. There was if if he's downfield, I mean, if if he if the receiver gets be on the line of scrimmage, then yes. If it's behind the line of scrimmage, then no. He was in front of the line of scrimmage. The linemen were 15 yards away from him. It, screening is an art. I mean, to coach screening, that's an art because there, there's a feel for what has to go on. And you have to be able to teach the running back when he catches the ball where he needs to go. And those linemen, they just, they just didn't have a block. They had what they call a lookout block. You yelled back at the quarter. It's fourth and four. Western goes for it. And again, the snap slips through the hands of Bocci Galupo, and all he can do is fall on top of it. And Dow takes over at the 26 of Bay City Western. You talked about the art of the snap, Coach, and I don't know, a couple of times it's looked like Bocci Galupo has taken his eyes off the ball. That he one is. was on that, target. That was, that was, he wasn't ready for it. Turnover on downs. The Chargers will be first and 10 on the Warrior 27-yard line. So when we started this game, the narrative really was how everything was going right for Dow. And in the second quarter in particular, it has shifted to everything has gone wrong for Bay City West. Absolutely, absolutely. I feel very sorry for their coaching staff right now. It's very frustrating for them. Clean pocket. Intercepted. Owen Van Driesch finally with some positivity for Bay City Western. See, that's exactly Dow would go for the juggler right there. But there, there was, there did not look like there was an option there no, for a strike. No, no. You got four receivers to one side. So you got a crowd over there on defense and Western has dropped a lot of people off. The free safety comes over and really makes an easy interception. He read the quarterback's eyes every step of the way. That is the senior's second interception of the season, Owen Van Driesch. Usually when you have that situation, you throw back to the single receiver. That's what the read tells you. 
You got everybody over there. They have everybody over there. Just throw back to the single receiver and let them run the football. No shortage of playmakers at any given time on the field for Dow's offense. There certainly may have been an option on the single receiver side. Direct snap to Taylor Pop. He got across the five to the six. And was brought down on the play by Mike Erickson. Ball carried by Western Warrior number 44. Brought down by number seven, Mike Erickson for the Chargers. That'll bring up second down and nine for the Warriors. This might be an instance, to your point, Coach, where you would want to have a quarterback under center. Pop, who looks yeah. like he's assumed quarterback duties right now, is just outside of his own end zone. Pop listed on the roster as a tailback. I guess it's a quarterback keeper. Pop lowers the shoulder pads and drives him into Braden so Wake. This is Western's answer to the Wildcat. Put Pop back there and let him just run the football out of here. And really, it's a good answer. There hasn't been effective quarterback no, play. No, there hasn't been. And now Bascalupo's back in there again. Third down and a nose. Bacigalupo runs up under center, quarterback sneak. He pinballs off the line and does not have it. Evan Mativa was in on the stop along with Cody Hunt who came up from the defensive backfield. Now, a couple minutes ago we talked about yes. never giving up the quarterback sneak. I mean, even if he only ran under center, as soon as he came up under center, did you see the Dow linebackers? They just jammed that A gap on either side of the center. So, so watch here on the replay. We're gonna see this all of a sudden, they just, the big guy pushes everything back and guess who's gonna make the tackle? Evan Mativa. Ball bounces out. Cody Hunt helped out too, the senior. It's now fourth down for Bay City Western. And the ball deep in Warriors territory. It looks like Dow is dispatching a return unit. You'd have to think Western punts here. They were denied on their last fourth down attempt on their previous drive. And Ben Shepard is in the game, the Western punter, about three yards into his own end zone. Watch pop on a, pat, on a fake. Parker comes up to field it. He's already in Western territory. With a nifty cutback, he gets all the way to the 30. Again, saving that hidden, I love that. When you catch the punt, do not let the punt hit the ground. Caught the punt, makes nine plus yards. Doesn't seem like much until you don't catch the punt and the ball rolls down to the 30 and you've lost 35 or 40 possible yards. What do you do here if you're down? You're up 38 to nothing. There's going to be a running clock if this score holds up to start the second half. But you've got the ball inside the 35 with a buck 40 left. Plenty of time. I'm you not doing keep, anything. You're not doing anything? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to embarrass the other guy. Okay. I mean, I got 38 up on him. It's going to be a running clock. I'm just going to run the ball right at you and say, okay, you know, you stop me fine. You don't stop me. I'm sorry. Surprised to see Dow throw as much as they did on their last couple of drives. A strike was picked off his last time. Delayed give to Rivera with daylight. And he's shoved out of bounds by Pop at the five yard line. Just run the football, that's all. You know, they, they can't stop him. I'm impressed with Rivera's speed and quickness. You know, just a. Great movement on his part. Great alternative at this point to Soraki and gives Rivera some in, uh, some confidence to run the ball in the future. Rivera came into this game averaging eight and a half yards per carry this year on 15 total touches and a touchdown. He's carried the ball three times tonight. 
for substantial gains on two of those carries. Here he is again with a nose for the end zone. He has it. Touchdown down. Now, when we look at the replay, you're going to see a beautiful block on the corner by Evan Mativa. There goes Siraki in motion. There's Mativa cleaning out inside, and then Rivera just runs to the corner. Beautiful job. Like Colin Erickson threw down a pretty good block there as well on the edge for Dow. Dow does score fast, don't they? They score fast. And we're, we're heaping praise on the skill position players, but again, these guys are getting to the second level without being yeah. touched. And, and you have to put a lot of credit on the offensive line for that. Kuhn stays perfect tonight. He's made all of his extra point Zach attempts, point and attempt he's good. got six of them, That'll plus a field goal tonight. No, it took Dow just 13 seconds to score from 26 yards out. Now, if I'm Western at this point, I'm going to take the entire 128 and not do anything. I got to get in that locker room. I got to, as a coach, I've got to not only get in that locker room, but I've got to make sure I don't lose my team. I got to get them in the locker room, say, okay, they got some points on us. It's now second half. Let's play this game as if it's 0 0. Go on out and play hard and forget about the score. The idea is for you to continue to see. We just have a, a little saying at our school, and that is every play get better. So we're going to go in that locker room. We're just going to say get better because you're being embarrassed right now. Get better. Score is 0 0 in the second half. Forget about the first half. You're going to get a running clock. Get better. Line drive kick, it's played by Trail. Gaping hole up the middle, but it's quickly filled. Tackle on the play made by Xander Brooks. Charger kickoff return by Warrior number one. Brought down by number 40, Xander Brooks for the Chargers. Bachi Galupo jogs out into the huddle. Western's coaching staff said that he was never put in an opportunity to succeed last season. And they basically discounted the numbers that he had as a sophomore on varsity last year, wanted to give him a fair shake at the quarterback controls this year. Pop on the ground, keeps going, breaks into the defensive backfield. Bay City Western's longest play from scrimmage of the day. He gets into down territory to the 49. That was a very strong run by Pop. Very strong. The go-to guy of the Bay City Western offense. He came into this game averaging seven yards per carry, and he left an injured down defender in his wake. Ryan Sage. I really like this new rule where if a player's down on the field, you go immediately to your sideline. And that stops the players from getting around the injured player. Milling just, about. Just get over on the sideline. It's not really a timeout, but it is a timeout. John Streeter is the athletic director for Dow and the offensive coordinator. And has been calling a lot of big plays. Big tonight. plays big tonight, plays that's tonight. for sure, as guys big have plays. executed. Minute 13 on the clock. One minute 13. Sage is helped up. There's Jason Watkins, the head coach. No 
helping his injured player off the field. Watkins, of course, has been calling the defense for a long time as Dow's head coach, but he's more hands-on with the defensive backs this year in particular because Dow's defensive back coach last year, Matt Peterson, is now the head coach at Saginaw Heritage. And doing a great job. Heritage is, is really a, a much improved ball club over uh, the previous coaches that were there. And they, they may end, not only end up with a winning season, but if they can play their cards right, they may get into the playoffs. A lot happens in these last two, three weeks of the season. And how does that make you feel? Because Jason Watkins, I think, in a lot of ways, is, is part of your coaching tree. And Matt Peterson is part of Coach Watkins' coaching tree. So, it, you know, maybe like a, a grandson it's to my you, grandson, of yes. <laughs> Pop in trouble. He stays on his feet. What a move by Pop. Yeah, and he barely got back to the line of scrimmage, but he should have been down for a five-yard loss on the play. A rare missed opportunity by Evan Mativa and Caleb Studebaker, who looked like they had Pop down. Yeah, I thought they had him down. He was, he, he, he's running, watch the lateral run. He's not going to get upfield, and all of a sudden he stops. There's the tackle, and he just kept his feet and keeps driving on. Bocci Galupo is swallowed up. Garrett Daniels covered him up. Charlie Hunkins was also a disruptor on that play. Warrior number two on the quarterback keeper. Okay, see, I don't agree with this. I, I think you're going to get yourself in trouble. The, the offensive coach has called a timeout with 12 seconds or 15 seconds on the clock. And so that means he's going to try to something to get on the score and which means desperation. And it just is, is interesting because look at the first play of this drive. Probably about a 15 yard run by Taylor Pop. Exactly. And then they've, they've tried to pass the ball a couple of times since. That's another thing that's impressive about Dow's defense. When they have gotten beat in this game, it's only been in one play doses. They've adjusted quickly on you the next play. take a look, they've got everybody back deep. So we're going to see a fly ball. And nearly right. intercepted. Thrown right at Braden Wake for Dow. See, those are, those are the things. You're, you're not going to fool a veteran team. You're not going to fool a team that has veteran coaches. Get in the locker room. Get yourself reorganized. Get a new uh, look at things. Because now it's fourth down, and you're not even going to be able to presumably milk the rest of the clock unless you get a big play here or a first down. There's a false start on the right tackle, Hayden Blair. Flag on the play. Now, if Dow gets the ball back. They could score. Easily. You think, <laughs> Easily. You don't think they'll just take a knee? No. Well, no. You're right. They could score. They could score fast. Absolutely. It, it, Dow can score on one play. They won't. But, you know, they'll run the football and run it out. But they're going to get an interception here. <laughs> I mean, it's just you got to get to the first down marker. So they're just going to say th you can throw the ball in there. Pop Good makes catch. the catch, yep. but a sure tackle Keep on the play by Daniels. Pop is brought down. Stop the clock. Five yards shy of the first down. And that brings us to the end of the half. But the clock You're did not the stop, at least before that Warriors play zero. ended. And we do, in fact, get to the locker room with Dow all over Bay City Western, 45 to nothing. Is this what you expected at the start of the game? Absolutely. I thought it would be a running clock by halftime. And the reason is that Western has been, had the running clock put on them by so many teams this year that, uh, and, and I had a hope 
that the 40 points they scored or the 35 points, whatever they had last week, would give them some momentum into this game. It hasn't. Uh, they've come out with the same look that they've had all year long. And uh, they're attempting what I call in today's football, Madden football. The coaches may have played a lot of Madden football, so that's the way they're coaching. Instead of coaching the game, they're coaching the plays. And I think, for example, right there, you're not going to get it on the defense is back 25 yards. You, you've got to call other plays. I mean, run the ball in there if you have to. I mean, you're trying to get a first down. You're not, you're not going to get a touchdown. Dow has everybody back at the first down marker. Uh, another example, I mean, they, the screen call was a great call. But it was obvious to me that they had never practiced a screen other than, okay, let's run a screen now. Uh, there's a lot of what I call Madden football play calling. And that is, you know, spread them out, throw the ball, think you can do this. Well, no, you don't have the guys on Madden football on your team. You have the guys from Western. And the guys from Western have always been hard-nosed, knock-you-on-your-back type players. They still have those players. But they're not running that kind but of offense. But they're not running that kind of offense. And because of that, they're not running that kind of defense. Great observations by my broadcast partner, Coach Frank Altimore. It's halftime at Midland Community Stadium, 45-0 Dow all over Bay City Western. Rain or shine, it's the homecoming game for Dow, and festivities will proceed accordingly, or at least as best they can, as we take a look at the homecoming court for 2018. Enjoy the halftime festivities, and we'll be back with you shortly for the start of the third quarter. Good evening, Good evening ladies, ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. Welcome yep. to the 2018 Dow High School Homecoming Halftime Ceremony. At this time, it is our pleasure and honor to introduce the 2018 Dow High School Court. Walking onto the field are the freshman class representatives and their parents from the class of 2022. Courtney Fisher, daughter of AJ and Melissa Fisher, Carter Coates, son of Ron and Gail Coates. Eliana Tierney, daughter of Jennifer Tierney. Keffer Klee, son of Steve and Michelle Klee. Congratulations to the freshman class representatives and their families. Representing the class of 2021, Kayla Dominowski, daughter of Mike and Andrea Dominowski. Sam Hatfield, son of John and Marcy Hatfield. Sophie Reed, daughter of Nate and Julie Reed. Max Doty, son of Brent and Mindy Doty. Congratulations to the sophomore class representatives and their families. Next on the field are the class of 2020 representatives. Please welcome Ellie Penn, daughter of Rick and Wendy Penn. Nate Ree, son of Heo and Karen Ree. Jenna Summers, daughter of Michael and Karen Summers. Colin Erickson, son of Michael and Anne Marie Erickson. 
Congratulations to the junior class representatives and their families. The Dow High King and Queen will be selected from the following senior class representatives. Jenna Hogue is the daughter of Steve and Tracy Hogue. She will be starting at Delta and then transferring to MSU for IT project manager. Jenna is a member of the varsity POM team, vice president of Gray 4-H, and is a participant in Charger Chefs. RJ Roy is the son of Lynn Roy and Gordon Dubay. He is planning on pursuing his dream of becoming a professional recording artist. RJ is a part of the Larkin 4-H group where he held the office of vice president. He is also an active member of the Midland Bethel Church of Nazarene. Allie Jaster is the daughter of Jeff and Amy Jaster. She will be attending Central Michigan University, majoring in psychology with plans to work in the mental health field. Allie is a senior drum major in the Charger Marching Band, a member of the swim team, National Honor Society, and Big Brothers Big Sisters. Michael Erickson is the son of Michael and Anne Marie Erickson. He would like to play college baseball and study business. Michael is a member of the Dow High football and baseball teams, serving as a captain on the baseball team. He is also on the Gold Squad, DECA, Blessed Sacrament Youth Outreach Team, and is an IB diploma candidate. Abby Peterson is the daughter of Adam and Lori Peterson. She would like to attend study computer programming at a yet-to-be-determined college. Abby is the captain of, uh, captain of the Varsity Palm team, a member of NHS, Dow High Chamber Singers, in Sad Save, and is also involved in her church youth group. Abby also likes to dance and play the piano. Nick Soraki is the son of Audrey Jegla and Mark Soraki. He would like to study architecture at a yet to be determined college. Nick is on the varsity football and basketball teams as well as National Honor Society. Ladies and gentlemen, our class of 2019 senior class homecoming representatives. Last year's homecoming queen, Miss Hannah Jackson, is unable to be with us this evening and sends her congratulations to the homecoming court this evening while she studies pre-medicine at Williams College. Dow High School Assistant Principal, Mrs. Jenny Coppins, will crown our Dow High School queen. Last year's homecoming king, Mr. Jake, Jacob Pasek, is joining us from the Aquinas College and will place the medallion around the king's neck. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dow High School Class of 2019 Homecoming King is Michael Erickson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Dow High School Class of 2019 Homecoming Queen is Ellie Jaster. A bouquet of yellow roses are being presented to the H.H. Dow Homecoming Queen on behalf of the Dow High School student body and staff by the Dow High School Assistant Principal, Mrs. Jenny Coppins. Dr. Steve Poole, Principal of Dow High School, is presenting the Charger Bolt to our Homecoming King. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you this year's Dow High School Homecoming Court. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as the court leaves the field, 
please stand for the Charger fight song. local public access facility gives you the opportunity to engage your community with your own television show. The content on our Community Voices channel ranges from talk shows, variety hours, and nonprofit informational specials. With the power of video continuing to gain steam, there's no better facility to produce your own content. Check out the City of Midland website or give us a call for more information. The sooner you do, the sooner you can make your own show. Your organization serves a vital role in the Midland community. MCTV can help you communicate your message and information about your group or organization using the video service MCTV provides. Call 837-3474 or go to the City of Midland website at cityofmidlandmi.gov mctv for more information. Come share your story through MCTV. When you take the studio portion of our workshop, you will learn to control sound with an audio mixer, create graphics for a show, learn how to run a high-def studio camera, and learn how to be a director. To learn more, come down to MCTV or give us Welcome back to Midland Community Stadium. Homecoming King and Queen have been crowned, and now Dow is just one half away from putting the finishing touches on a homecoming football game win over visiting Bay City Western. It is 45-0 Dow at the break. And alongside Coach Frank Altimore, my name is Chris Vosters. Coach, let's get to some of the highlights from the first half, and I think we're going to see a lot of number 16 for Dow, we're gonna Nick Soraki. Soraki. And a lot of this guy, thing. too. He runs with every touchdown. And there have been a lot of them for Dow. Here's the first. There's an option out there to Soraki. Great blocking on the perimeter. See, that's what Dow does. They block strong on the perimeter. And again, that's it. I'm going to pace and make some pretty good moves. Fumble recovery there by Dow. And here comes uh, Soraki again, pulling his way into the end zone. Soraki had four touchdowns in the first half. There's Dude. his third of the game. This is still the first quarter. First quarter. Great. Two great moves put him in the end zone. 
as I said, you, as you watch Rocky run, he gets in the end zone and does a great job. This is Evan Mativa. Look at this guy run. <laughs> More Nick Soraki. Actually, this that's is, Caleb Studebaker. Beg your pardon. This is, a, I think, a confidence builder when you kick a field goal at that distance. Beautiful job. This is the one we saw. Here's Soraki coming around the corner, and we, we made quite a move on this, and just forces his way into the end zone. Just an all-around run, speed, patience, and then, of course, running over a Bay City Western defender. And this is Rivera with his run. And there we and are. There, yeah, there we go. <laughs> we promise he got into the end zone, and that's what made it 45 nothing going into the locker room at halftime. And, and I guess if you're Dow, what's the objective? I, I would think staying focused in the well, second half. Well, again, that's the biggest problem that you have when you have a big lead like that. What you want to do here is stay focused, realize that you're going to play your starters maybe one series on offense, one series on defense, and then everybody else gets to play. And that's the most important thing. Homecoming, everybody needs to play. There are so, so many weapons on this Dow offense, and just about everybody, it felt like, got a touch or two in Dow, that first half. Dow has that. They do spread the wealth around. And it, they do a great job of, of play calling. You know, I was talking about Madden play calling. Dow does not do Madden play calling. Dow does specific calls for specific defenses. They look at you. They break you down. In order to beat Dow, you have to have the ability to change your defense on the run because they're going to find you. And they do find you. So that that's how, that's how you defeat a team like Dow. Dow does just not call plays to call plays. They they may call a play to set up a play. They do a, they do just a, a terrific job of that. But they're just not calling any play. They look at you, they wait for you to, to see what you're going to do, and then they, they have a play ready for you. And they do, have, as you saw by the cards that fell out of uh, Soraki's uh, armband, uh, they probably got 600 plays. I mean, they, and, and they practice them all. That, that's the amazing thing to me. If, if I were I, Bay City Western, I'd have picked a few of those yeah, cards up. right. But I, uh, you know, I remember back thinking back about how during my time of coaching, we had limited number of plays, and uh, and that's exactly the way football was played then. Now football is played wide open. But again, your coaches upstairs are crucial to the development of your offensive game plan because they have to recognize what you're doing. Dow's coach, who's calling the plays, is upstairs, and he's relaying the information down to the to the field, which is a tremendous advantage. He's right next to us, as a matter of fact, athletic director and offensive coordinator John Streeter. There's the homecoming queen, recently crowned a drum major for the Dow High Marching Band, which regrettably is not here tonight. Understandably so, given the conditions. It's been raining uh, to varying degrees here in the first half. That's a good look, actually, at the precipitation coming down now in more ways than one on Bay City Western sideline down 45 to nothing. And I, I really latched on to one thing that you said at the end of the first half, Coach, when if you were Bay City Western going into the locker room at halftime, your message would be to just get better every play. Get better every play, go 0-0. Zero, zero. Okay, let's go back to the keys of the game before the start here. We're going to go with Dow again, business as usual, and look at this. They have done business as usual. They have scored on every possession. Control the blitz. Where is the blitz? Bay City has not stunted one time to challenge the quarterback or to put pressure on the perimeter. And again, I'm looking at that hidden yardage improvement. I'm always looking at that. Uh, and I did see some of that uh, for Dow. For Western, let's go to Western. Limit to turnovers. They haven't done that. They haven't been unable to defend the run game. And rather than slow the game down, they've done just the opposite. They've sped the game up a little bit and have played right in the Dow's hands. Even down to the very last drive of the first exactly, half. Exactly, exactly. Well, this is the first kickoff, actually, of the game for Bay City Western. They started with the football, Western, that is, to begin the game and, of course, did not score. So that is Ethan Malin with the kick. And it's brought up by Nick Parker. 
he's thrown down, and that's a horse collar tackle that will go against Taylor Pop. Playing on the play. Face mask. A face mask, so not quite a horse collar, but an infraction I either I way. I also thought it was a horse collar. Fifteen yard penalty. What did you think of Shane A strike's first half? Uh, business as usual. I mean it wasn't spectacular, but it didn't have to be. I thought his passing was a little bit off, but again, in this weather, I can I can expect. What I did like was the way he st stabilized the offense. He did throw an interception, the only possession, and I guess in fact that Dow did not score on. Back to the pitch game, Nick Soraki is brought down across the 45-yard line by Van Driesch. A little bit of a shovel pass, nicely done. Ball carried by charger number 16, Nick Soraki. And really, at this point, a five-yard gain for Soraki, or if you're Bay City Western's defense, to hold Soraki to just a five-yard gain it is already an improvement. Exactly. <laughs> Four touchdowns again for Soraki in the first half, and now 22 on the season for the captain and three-year varsity starter. Second team all SVL last year. You'd have to think he's put together quite a case for first team this year. Right back to him. In comes a flag. Soraki has a first down for now. That's usually flag on the when the umpire throws the flag, that's a holding. Soraki looks like he knows it. Oh, block below the waist. But in any event, a penalty on the Dow offensive line negates that first down run. Now, I see Soraki getting up a little gimpy, and this is the thing you want to avoid at this point. You've got to say to yourself, okay, the good guy's got to come out, and all the kids got to play. That's not to say the kids aren't the good guys also, but your starters have got to be protected at this point. And Soraki is on the sideline now. He takes a breather, and whether or not this is a blowout game or not. Soraki sees a lot of tick, along with Brennan Doyle, along with Chase Perry, who committed a personal foul penalty in the first half as well. And that's one of the questions that Dow's coaching staff is faced with on a game-by-game -game basis. How do you save reps for these guys here and there on either side of the football? Well, that's, that's always a question. Uh, interesting, Chase Perry is on the sideline with his helmet on. So that means he was not ejected from, well, he may be, still be ejected from the game. Uh, I would be surprised uh, if he was not ejected, but if he wasn't, it's a break for Dow. Dow certainly does not have any shortage of weapons, even with Perry and Soraki's sideline. That was Brennan Doyle on the carry. Brennan Doyle, brought down by number 44, Taylor Pop. I know you really like Doyle's running style. I love, I love Doyle. I, he, you know, he's, he's, a, he's not the tallest player. He's not the fastest player. He is quick, but he gives you everything you want in a player. Everything you want. He gives you his all. His, I, I find this to be true of a lot of, of, of Dow's players. Uh, you know, they're not the stars, but they, they do. They work in a cohesive unit. Doyle still back there next to his quarterback. His head coach, Jason Watkins, teaches math at Dow High and had Brennan last year as a junior in BC Calculus. Pass is caught by Owen McCaffrey, short of a first down on third down. Charging the pass complete to number 20, Owen McCaffrey. Fourth down and about five. Soraki comes back into the huddle. And a play has just been relayed down to Dow's offense, so they go for it here with the ball just near midfield. What do you
do you think of this play call? Option. That's what I think of this play call. Option. It's worked very effectively yeah. for Dow so far. It'll work now, too, because of the way Bay City set up for it. Soraki has the first down and then some to the 40. Boy, I got to tell you, Coach, you are something else. <laughs> I mean, with the way they're set up for it, they're just, they're asking, they're, they're saying, okay, you can have first down. You have John Streeter in your headset or something? It's just the way the, the way Dow runs. You watch a team long enough, you can pretty well call most of their plays. <laughs> just by, by their alignment. That tells you one thing. By what the defense doing, that tells you another thing. They'll probably run it again. There it is. The opposite way this time. Great cut by Soraki. And there he goes, making people miss inside the 10. A little slow to his feet again. It looks. Uh, as you said, a little gimpy, Coach. Get him out of there. Get him out of there. Again, great block. See, see Doyle make a great block right there and then stayed with the guy. Another great block downfield. Uh, and then there's a, an excellent block, a no block by uh, uh, Zach Kuhn, who could have easily blocked the guy in the back and just backed off and didn't make a play. Good observation. Soraki has been on his feet for a while as he's once again back on the sideline. Caleb Studebaker is in the game at the running back position along with Evan Mativa. Soraki was part of the homecoming court, so he was on the field during halftime as well. Studebaker nearly wiped out as he tried to plant and cut, and he was brought down by Taylor Pop. See, I like Studebaker, I like Studebaker on defense. Right now, Rivera would be the guy I want to give. I want to give the ball to Rivera because I'm going to build up Rivera's confidence. If something should happen to Soraki, I want Rivera ready to go. Soraki's a senior. Brennan Doyle is a senior. Studebaker and Rivera are both juniors. Matiba is a junior, so there's certainly something still in the pipeline. Well, Matiba's going to get the ball here. Second and goal. He's got the ball. He's got blockers. He's got a touchdown. Touchdown, Chargers. How about that? I got to tell you something. I still think that they're feeding you something in your headset that I'm not getting, or you're just in the huddle or something like that. Well, I know you've been doing this for 40 for, plus years. First off, Mativa looks at his, his card to say, okay, what is the play? <laughs> and now, you know, he's in the lineup, and look at him, just, he kind of lumber, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, I'm going into him. Just get out of my way. Again, the edge blocking, too, by Dow. So Zach Kuhn throwing a block, Studebaker as well. Shorter guy. Colin Erickson comes into the game. There's Soraki who does the holding duties. And Kuhn's kick is blocked. Owen Van Driesch got his paws on it. And the score is 51 to nothing. Charger extra point is blocked by number 33, Owen Van Driesch from the Western Warriors. That makes your score your now high Chargers 51. We'll see a little jumping over the line. And Right there, see, see that's illegal. See, you can't jump over the line like that. But they didn't call. Remember a running clock, because we're in the second half and Dow leads by 35 points or more. And there is an acronym that they throw out there. Are you familiar with tips for when the clock is stopped in a running clock situation? I think touchdowns, injuries, right. penalties, and safeties now sometimes there's also something called a super running clock and that's at 50 points okay now I don't know if it's 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 on right now okay yes as you that look at the, the clock that means the clock's not gonna stop mm -hmm. for anything other than an injury or a, a touchdown this 
scoreboard is in the east end zone off to the right of your screen. You know, as a spectator and as a commentator, I like at this point that there is a running clock. As a coach, I hated the running clock because it meant that I had a whole flock of kids that weren't going to play a whole lot, and I wanted them to play. I wanted my starters not to play. I wanted my backups to play. We had a rule. In every game, we're going to play 28 players. 28 are automatically going to be on some aspect of the field. And then the other guys, okay, you had to wait for your turn. Well, your turn came in games like this. Good DJ effort. Trail with good some effort wheels. by Trail. Very good effort. Late flag comes in. Flag on the play. Now that that's a very silly, silly, frustrating foul on the part of Western. A good effort on the part of Trail. Now it's going to be a 15-yard penalty. And, and put you again back in the hole. See, that's, that, that's, that's an effort of frustration. And that is the culture that you have to change as, if, uh, if you're Coach Willards. You gotta change that culture. And you know what, I have faith he's gonna do it. Willards was on one of the best Michigan State teams ever. And I, and I say that with consideration to present company. Coach Frank Altmore was on the 19, 1966 National Championship team. Coach Chris Willards for Bay City Western was on the 1987 Rose Bowl team. And that's another snap malfunction with Carter Bacigalupo yeah. at the controls. That went right through his hands. That's the third time that's yep, happened. That's happened. It's sometimes the ball comes back hot. Sometimes it doesn't. You know, you just got to be ready for it. I almost think he's taking his eyes off the ball and looking into Dow's backfield. Could very well be. Where's the blitz coming from? After the penalty and the sack, Taylor Pop gets a direct snap. Minimal game, but a positive one across the five to the six. And now, Coach, we're starting to see some of the bench get worked in Taylor for Huff, down. Yeah, I like that. Brought down by number 79, Charlie Humpkins for the Chargers. That'll bring up third down for the Warriors. And I see that's one player. Hawkins just made that play. He's one player that shouldn't come out. Even though, because he needs the work. He just got brought up from the JVs. He's a big player. And he just, he needs the work. So he should stay in. Most of the others, let's let's get the other kids in. Taylor Pop on a carry past the original line of scrimmage to the 17-yard line, but Bay City Western needs to get to the 23 for a first down. This is third down, correction, fourth down now. That brings up fourth down for the Warriors. And Bachi Galupo on the Bay City Western offense head to the sideline. Bay City Western has crossed the 50-yard line just once. And they were shut out in their first three games of the season as well. Steering a shutout on the face here in the final minute of the third quarter. Parker clears out for Dow, and Western downs it at the 48 of Dow. I see, that's one of the first times I've seen tonight where that was a smart move. Do not catch a squiggly ball going around. Just get out of the way. We'll, we'll try to make do with what we got. It's the balls that are kicked up in the air that uh, you, you, you say, okay, you got to catch those. Even if you fair catch those, catch them. It does not look like Shane A. Strike is in the game at quarterback for Dow. Now, Brennan Doyle is in the middle of the huddle right now. Brennan Doyle is a backup quarterback. Jason Watkins told us that Brennan Doyle, because of his mastery of the offense, makes for a very good quarterback when you need him. And that is the last play over the final few seconds of the third quarter. So when the fourth quarter begins, we will see Brennan Doyle 
as the quarterback for Dell. That remember I said that uh, usually you play your team, your starters, one offensive and one defensive series, and then that's it. You know they're they're done for the night, and you allow your other kids to play. And this is why. 51 nothing. Dow, we have a running clock as we get set to start the fourth quarter. What do you remember about coaching in the homecoming game? Well, first off, you always have to avoid the distractions. You know, say, okay, we know that, you know, like two of the football players are on the court. That's a distraction. Uh, okay, they're more interested in the dance coming up. That's a distraction. So depending on the type of game, if it's a game like this, you let the distractions take over. Okay, you know you're going to win the ball game. You know you're probably going to mercy them. If it's another game, for example, if tonight we were playing Mount Pleasant, then you really have to change your focus as a coach to the game and, and explain that to the players. I know you got, you know, you're going out with Mary Lou. I know you got all these little things happening. You're worried about dinner. You're worried about a limo. You know, you're worried about all of it. Don't. We got, we got Mount Pleasant. Uh, and so that's why you, depending on who your opponent is, you will sometimes allow the distractions to take precedent. Sometimes they don't, they don't, you just fight, fight them off. So there's Brennan Doyle at the controls. Zach Kuhn in motion. Doyle with a hot shot on the snap, then he tossed it to himself. He still got it, and he's still moving. That's a positive gain for Brennan Doyle. Unbelievable. Okay, so the ball was fumbled. And Doyle picked it out of the air. There was a late snap, too. A late snap. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait to see this on replay. So we have a bad snap. There's the bad snap. There is the pitch. Oh, no. it's home. No, it's not. Let's, <laughs> let's just throw it up in the air and Let me get that back. How's that for, in my mind, and make a positive gain out of it? Again, that's Brent Doyle. I mean, he just... He does so many good things. Now you've got to be, as a coach watching that, ready to throw your play sheet down when you see that happen. But then when you get five yards out of it, you just have to throw your hands up yeah, in the air, right? Mike Erickson is covered up behind the line of scrimmage. Here comes third and long. Mike Erickson, brought down by number 44, Taylor Pop, and number 56, Brett Perra for the Warriors. Now, if they run the option on this play, I guarantee you Doyle won't pitch it. He'll keep it. For what it's worth, Doyle is four for four passing this season. He's got 56 yards passing and a touchdown. He's also carried the ball six times for 48 yards going into tonight, and he's had a good night on the ground in a running back's role in this offense. And he slips up to the 50-yard line for a gain of two. Fourth down. Now, see, I like this. I like the punt because my punt team hasn't been on the field tonight. So I need to get them some work also. And to expand on that a little bit, do you want to count a game like this if you're Dow? Not that Dow is looking ahead. They most certainly are not. But with Mount Pleasant coming up, that's going to decide the Valley champion this year, Dow versus Mount Pleasant. Do you want a game like this going into a, a, yes. a, I want a game like that? I want a game where I'm not going to get beat up. Okay. I want a game where I can practice on Monday see, rather than Wednesday. Uh, there were times when I was practicing, when I was coaching that we would play at Flint Central on Friday night and then have a, a very good Arthur Hill team for the championship the next Friday night, and we couldn't practice till Wednesday because you get so beat up. And you the try to let your injuries heal, the, sometimes the nagging bruises that, that occur. Like to work on shows well, like in a game like this, especially in weather like this, you rarely get hurt in weather like this. You just don't get the traction that, that makes for a good hit. So, yeah, I, these are the kind of games you like to have. First, for homecoming, because everybody's happy. And then second, I got a big game next week, and this was a good little exercise. And I didn't 
didn't have to show anything that I haven't shown before. There was a timeout on the play, and now the running clock resumes. Zach Kuhn is the kicker and the punter. That was nearly blocked. And then fumbled nearly on the return attempt. Bay City Western does recover. Owen Van Dries was able to cover up the hot potato. Charger punt down by number Looking at Bay City Western's offense, I think it's interesting that Jack Frizel has not been brought back into the game at quarterback. Me too. Me too. They stick with Carter Bacigalupo. It'll bring up first and 10 for the Warriors on their own 20 yard The plan yard. for Bay City Western's coaching staff coming into this season was to not create a quarterback battle, but to give both guys opportunities and make them root for each other. That doesn't work. You, you try to have uh, competition, but then you make a decision that's your quarterback, you make sure the other guy, if he's a good athlete, finds a spot to play, keep him happy, because he may, you may need him. Yes. You give him enough practice. But switching back and forth. Now, I will say it did work pretty well for Dow last year when they had Shane Aistrike and Ben Zeitler. Yeah, but Shane Aistrike was the quarterback because Zeitler was playing defense primarily. And they would bring Zeitler in because they wanted to kind of bring Here's a gash play for oh. Taylor Pop. Longest run of the night for Bay City Western. Nick Parker has an angle, and he's finally brought down by Gage Kroll. Good for him. That was a good run. Very good run. Carried by Warrior number 44, Taylor Pop, makes up the first down for the Warriors. What went wrong Pop on this play? Uh, poor tackling, Kane, bad position. He's going to cut back, back away from the, uh, away from the flow. Now he breaks the contain. There's, there's a bad play by nine, and now he's out into the perimeter. Nine, uh, nine and Doyle are going to recover and get him, but actually a good job by Kroll to trail that play yep. and bring him down. Here's Pop again. Got past Kroll on the edge, but is brought down short of the pile on, and it brings up second and goal. They give it right back to Pop after that 50-yard run. Yeah, Hands on his hips now. That was a good cutback on his part. He ran away from the play, and sometimes that, uh, that happens. Well, 540 to go in the game, and this is a huge sequence for Bay City Western just to get on the board. Pop, yes, touchdown, Bay City touchdown, Western. Warriors. Good for Western. And how much does that do going into next week for Western? Well, again, Western has one thought on their mind, and that is Bay City Central. Bay City Central has been playing at the same awful level that Western has been playing. so. That ought to be an interesting game, but it's a city game. It's a champion, city championship game. They'll have a lot of uh, uh, enthusiasm for that, and that's really what they should be playing for. So, good, good kick. Booted home by Ethan Malin, who returned earlier Ethan this Malin season from a broken collarbone he suffered in seven on seven over the summer. But here once again is Taylor Pop finishing the work that he started on this drive. Good drive. Fullback leading up in there and see that's the thing. I'm, I'm, I watch uh, Western. Do you notice how the Western linemen were in front of the ball carrier? They were in the end yeah, zone. They too. were in the end zone too. That's what you want. No, that was that was very good. That was very very good. Timeouts, injuries, penalties, scores. That's when the clock stops in right. this running clock situation. 5.08 to play. What do you think if Western tries an onside kick here? Why not? I, my, my thoughts exactly. Why not? What's worst could happen? Go back to super running clock? You've already been there. 
Oh, yeah, I, that's... Why not? You see, what that does, it tells you as a co it tells your co it tells your players that your coach is not giving up, that he's going to fight down to the last minute, and that's a, that's a very important thing. Team has to know your coach didn't give up. Here comes Ethan Malin, and he does in fact kick it deep. And here's Parker. Oh. Nearly took that one to the house. That was close. There was no one left after that last white jersey tripped him up. Let's just see how close Parker got. Well, again. Dow makes some pretty good blocks. There's a good no block right there. There's a missed tackle. There's a missed tackle. And just got an arm on him. Knocked him a little bit off balance. Rosenbrock knew how close it was. Erickson, the new quarterback, picks up a first down with his legs. Mike Erickson is the homecoming king. That's ex that, no, I, that is, at this point, the only play I'm running. Snap it to the quarterback, get a running back in there, and let's just go. Chargers pick up the first down. It's first and 10 on the Warrior 45 yard line. It was a heck of a block by Xander Brooks, number 40, to really spring that play. As Coach mentioned, Mike Erickson is the homecoming king. Here's Brooks, stutter stepped, and that cost him some time, but he gets across the line of scrimmage and a hard run for Brooks. He stays in bounds, too. Xander Brooks. That was a decent run. You know, one thing I. I, I I've noticed in this whole game well, is if, so if I'm coaching Western's Sandra defense, the one thing I want to teach is getting off of blocks. They do not get off blocks. They, they get Velcroed. <laughs> you know, they, they, get, they just flat out get Velcroed. And as a, as, a, as a defensive coach, the one thing you're stressing is open field tackling and get off of blocks and get to the ball. How many players can get in? What I call, how many times are you going to get into the pitcher? Erickson. Flag flies in. Erickson has the first down, but this looks like it will come back. Flag on the play. It is a hold against Dell. called against the Chargers. Erickson, by the way, coach, I think you heard this too, is a captain on the baseball team. Very good baseball player. Wants to play college baseball. Dallas baseball is now coached by a former player of mine, Rich Jude. And uh, Rich, Rich is the son of a former uh, teammate of mine at Michigan State. But uh, the baseball team is doing much better at Dow. Much better under Rich's tutelage. Still might have a ways to go to catch up to Midland, though. Yeah. Yeah, well, they Midland's taking it. Midland's doing the job. They're nearly a, a state Eric, finals team Eric, this year. Eric Albright's doing a great job as their baseball coach. Yeah. So a, a good rivalry brewing Very on, good. On, the, on the baseball Very good. Should have a pretty good matchup in a couple of weeks right here. Football teams. This basically. ought to be a great game. I really think it's going to be. A fantastic game, and I'm not sure if you can, uh, you better bring your calculator, because <laughs> those two teams, they do play good, they play good football. Midland's defense has been, except for last week, has been outstanding. Their offense has been a little slow getting together, but. Change that quarterback this year. Made a big adjustment for them, yes. Final 90 seconds, maybe just two more plays with this running clock. Brooks, the motion man. Erickson keeps it. 
and he's dragged down at about the 40-yard line. Tackle made on the play by Grant Gillis of Bay City Western. Mike Erickson on the quarterback came in for the Chargers. Brought down, brought, brought down by Western Warrior number 58 and number 83, Thane Deming. I'm going to take a penalty, and then I'm going to run the ball. 40 seconds left now. Again, the clock still moving. Hands up. The official's got his hand up, ready to make the count. There's the penalty. <laughs> and okay. If you're just joining us, Coach Frank Altimore has been doing this just about all half. In the minds of not just the coaching staff, but clearly the officials too. Awfully impressive coach. But you know, you don't want to, you really don't want to embarrass the other team. You, you don't want to have to punt the ball. You just want to run the clock out. So as you're doing this, you just kind of say, okay, it's, it's time to go. Run the clock. So this will likely be the final play of the game, and we'd like to remind you that the coverage of this football game is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff, and they've done a fantastic job tonight in particular, braving the elements tonight. And this is a fourth and 10 for Erickson. And it's a pooch punt, Ben Roethlisberger style. And down just outside the 10-yard line. Pretty good play. The clock will continue to run, and Western's offense does not take the field. 51 to 7, Dow wins emphatically a game that was, for lack of a better term, over at halftime. It was 45 to nothing. Homecoming win for the Dow High Chargers, and now the fun really begins, Coach, yeah. with Mount Pleasant on the road next Mount week. Pleasant. What do you think about that matchup? Well, Mount Pleasant is an awfully good football team, and Mount Pleasant does the one thing that, that Dow is going to have struggle with, and that is Mount Pleasant runs right at you. They have a, a, a philosophy of, here we come, what are you going to do about it? And whether or not you can stop, you got to be able to stop their big plays because they – they run in there, they make a nice little break. Moog, their running back's a good runner. So, yeah, that's going to be a good game. What do you think you know about Dow now that you didn't at the beginning of this game? At, at the beginning of this game, uh, not much. I mean, we I had a feeling they were going to mercy them by halftime. What impresses me is the depth of some of their players that have, have developed, and that's what's impressing me. Uh, Rivera, who was running a little hesitant early in the season. You saw the night how hard he ran. Uh, Caleb Studebaker, who's emerged as a, a leading tackler. So yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm impressed with the uh, overall improvement from game one to game seven. Now you hope you're gonna get improvement, but I'm really impressed with how well they've improved and, and some of the things going. And I love guys like Brennan Doyle, who have given you 100% from the first day of practice to right now. Beautiful. Five wins now for the Dow Chargers. They're five and two on the season, and they've won five straight. Bay City Western falls to one and six. And can you build on the second half if you're Bay City Western and head coach Chris Willers? If, if you're Bay City Western right now, your emphasis is on the next game, getting better, preparing yourself for Bay City Central. You see, if they beat Bay City Central, then their season is salvaged. So as a coach, you have to build for that. Now, when I was coaching at Dow, this is, the, this is the week, if I could, I prepared for middle and high, even though I was playing somebody else. So I'm going to bet that Western, or Dow, was preparing for middle and high and Mount Pleasant this week, and probably Mount Pleasant, because they knew they could handle Western. Western just doesn't have it. Now, I think I know who you're going to pick, uh, getting into your head a little bit here, but if you had to give a player of the game, who would Rocky. it be? Nick I mean, Soraki. Nick Soraki is special. We do have some highlights from the game to show you, and keep in mind a majority of these will be from the first half, and you're going to see a lot of Nick Soraki. 
four touchdowns in the first half for Soraki. He now has 22 on the season. Here There's is that, his first. That, that option that Western just did not, was not in position. And again, I want you to notice on all these touchdown runs on how beautiful Dow's blocking is and how Velcroed Western's defenders are. That was a good re fumble recovery right there. By Soraki too. By Soraki. And this is Soraki running into the end zone. But look, look how the uh, Dow blockers are pushing him back off the ball. Soraki kept moving his feet really well on that play. This is the pass to Soraki right here. And again, this is his Le'Veon Bell moves right there. Little stutter step and you're in the end zone. Beautiful. That was a play that Dow did not connect on earlier in the game. This is Mativa coming around the corner. Again, look at the blocking off on the corner by uh, Soraki who, to get... Uh, A.B. Rivera had a good block, yeah. too. This is Caleb Studebaker, and there were a lot of players out of the backfield for Dow who got involved with some good carries to spell yes. Soraki. Yes. Now, this play coming up after this excellent 37-yard field goal by Zach Kuhn is really the Le'Veon Bell play that you were talking about earlier in the broadcast. This is the one right here. I love this. I love the, the, the angle. Nice job by our production team to do this, getting down on the sideline. There it is right there. And then the two guys run into each other, and he pushes them both aside. It's a beautiful run. That was his fourth and final touchdown of the first half. And with some misdirection using Soraki as a decoy. Here comes an option. Again, nice run here. Again, everybody from Western is being Velcroed. Pretty hard to stop, and he gets down in there. The guy does catch him on the ankle. And it's going to be Mativa just powering into the end zone. You know, he looks like he's lumbering. But I, I've got to tell you, he is running at a fast pace. He looks lumbering but he's running at a very fast pace. And you don't want to get in his way, 6 no, 2 No, he's going to hurt you. He'll leave some tread marks. Well, final score once again, Dow 51, Bay City Western 7. And again, the coverage of this football game is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. If you'd like to work on shows like this one, sign up for our new MCTV producer workshop. You will learn how to be a producer, create a studio program, use professional video cameras, and edit your video using Final Cut Pro editing software. The cost is just $45, which includes the annual access user fee. Call 837-3474 to sign up. And you can learn more about MCTV at www.cityofmidlandmi.gov slash MCTV or follow us on Facebook. Coach, this was a lot of fun. Thanks very fun. much. I, I was pinch Great. hitting for Dave Marsh, who's uh, moving, we understand, over the weekend. So thanks very much for Thank doing this you. with me. Good job tonight. Appreciate nice working that. with you. He is head coach Frank Altimore. My name is Chris Fosters for our outstanding crew, braving the wind and the rain here at Midland Community Stadium. Your final score, Dow 51, Bay City Western 7. Have a great night.